Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a cracking summer 2023 unless you live in the southern hemisphere, Australia, New Zealand. In which case I hope you're having a cracking winter. So, what are we doing here? What's this video all about? Well, I've noticed over the summer, even though I've not had much time to play, I've been watching the videos, that the tall railgun's been getting quite a lot of negativity lately, particularly from some of the higher profile YouTubers out there. And I'll also be the first to admit I haven't always shown them in the best light on my channel because I'm usually punishing spawn campers, who are, in my opinion, abusing them a little bit. So this video is dedicated to giving an alternative narrative and really showing how the railgun tank, the Tor, can be probably the most aggressive in-map hunter of armor that there frankly is in the game. So you're probably all aware, even if you don't have first-hand direct experience of it, you've probably been on the receiving end of it, that the Tor railgun has the highest damage projectile in the game. Though there is a caveat to that, and I'll get to that in a minute. What's often overlooked, though, is the Tor's mobility. It's one of its greatest advantages, and sadly, all too often, they're left on the backline in siege mode with no one taking advantage of that. You can absolutely outflank your opponents, and as you've seen in this introduction, I've managed to take out two Tors, one tank, and two wildcats. It's really fantastic if you just get in there and attack aggressively. Another deeply undervalued attribute is that your primary weapon, the railgun, bypasses APS, whereas you're seeing here, for the battle tank, you can intercept everything that they throw at you. They have absolutely no chance if you go after them. I would humbly suggest that one of the best use cases for the railgun, the Tor, is to actually get out there and specifically go after wildcats. With your speed, you can easily flank, get behind them, two shots and they're gone, one if they've taken a bit of damage, you get lucky, and it is a tremendous help for your team. But don't ignore aircraft if it's you. Active protection really is incredible. Look, my point is you can take out any aircraft you see in the sky. You don't need siege. A lot more of that to come later, but for the moment, the main objective of this video is to seek to convince you and prove to you that the tour is not something that should be hiding on the back line that you should be worried about, keeping it away from objectives. It can stand toe to toe and actually take down the heaviest vehicles in the game. And if I can prove that case to you, then I would have considered this video to have been a success. That said, whenever I offer an opinion, I always recognize that that's precisely what it is, my opinion. If you like sitting on the back line, being in siege mode, going after the aircraft, a long shot, all power to you, that's completely legit, this is just my view. Though I will just talk about it a little bit at the end of the video. But I'm here to advocate for aggressive, highly mobile gameplay, so that's what I'm going to do, and that's a perfect lead into the most important thing, the loadout of your tank. Now the default round is called the hammer. It takes less time to charge a shot, but it does less damage. The alternative is the maul round, which does more damage, but takes more time to charge the shot. And when you're playing as a tour, active protection, any day over repair, it's an absolute no brainer and you're gonna see why. But going back to the projectile, I absolutely advise against the hammer and here's why. Do you see the tank? Take a look at how little damage it does. That is very underwhelming damage. The more round does a lot more, as I'm going to show you in a second. And also, when you fire at aircraft, such as a stealth helicopter like you're seeing here, you can't reliably take them down with one shot. Here it is again against the jet. Failed the one-shot test. Now, let's try the more round to see what happens there. Perfect, Perfect one-shot kill, and it doesn't take a long time to charge in mobility mode. More drop ready and waiting. Our fucking day! 1.3 seconds and the ability to finesse the shot. That's really, really not a big ask. Now let's fire a maul at a tank, shall we? Much higher damage. Check that out. Let's fire again. So as with the introduction, two shots, not quite enough, but even a tap from somebody else and it's gone. Less than 5% health. Lastly, just be aware there's no difference in projectile speed or drop. They're both exactly the same, whichever you pick. Wall-to-wall -wall hit in six-tenths of a second. That's pretty incredible. Let's compare it to a tank at half the range. Eight-tenths of a second, but if you want to see true wall-to-wall, -wall, I've got to call on Dassel for YouTuber I follow. This was incredible. Thank you for letting me use it. Link in the description. Check this. That is possibly the greatest tank shot I've ever seen in my life, and I would just like to take this moment to salute you. Well done. That was great. The only real downside that both rounds have, doesn't matter which one you pick, is that they can't react quickly to a target coming across its path, but I'll talk about the battle tank in another video. For now, please be aware that every shot you see, the speed, the damage, those are more rounds, because they're my favorite, and there you go. 
Okay, so as promised in the introduction, here's why you want to pick the active protection system and not repair. Let's go hunting, our target's an old school tank. With a great opening hit like that, don't hold back, rush him down, go finish him off. Watch how APS completely shuts him down, he's got nothing. Even the hit to my front before I turned APS on didn't really do any damage. There's nothing they can do against you. Honestly, I think the Tor being able to bypass APS is the most broken thing about the whole vehicle, but whatever, moving on. Let's take on a Wildcat equipped with uh, anti-vehicle rockets and a good old spam cannon. Let's see how we get on there. No shops, let's go downstairs and chase them down. All weapons rejected by APS, I mean, you almost feel bad for them, don't you? Now, this next clip's a little bit of a cautionary tale. It shows what happens when your APS is still on cooldown and you run into an absolute titan like the map. I've never taken one out in less than four shots, so it's basically a race against time until I can get it up. We should get it! APS kicks in just in time to save my life, which is good. So just whilst we're on the subject of the transports, let's quickly talk about the cab. Now, it's been a little bit inconsistent for me, maybe because I'm not quite hitting it where I think I am, like the front or the side. But I can usually take out a cab in two shots, but sometimes it requires three. Let's take a look at a couple of the examples. So the first one you saw took two shots, but that one seemed to take three shots to finish it off. Interesting. On this example here, it was looking like a three-shotter until somebody interfered and they dropped down to two. But on this final one, it was definitely two shots straight to the front armor and it went down. It's just strange. Key takeaway, they're not very dangerous to you. But let's talk about something which is dangerous to your team and those are wildcats. Now, one of the use cases I said at the beginning is hunting them down, particularly when they're hiding in their spawn or very close to their back line. With your speed and range, you have the perfect combination to go and take them out. I admire the effort, but it wasn't meant to be. Just quickly, here's me killing a wildcat that spawned camping with a wall-to-wall -wall shot. Going back to the theme of the video though, if you use your speed and mobility to push up to the end of the map, you can see them camping out back there, and then basically if you've got line of sight, it's over. You are their execution. We are doing this! Something else you can do if you're feeling a little bit cheeky and you manage to get the tour at the beginning of the round and the map lends itself to it like uh, Discarded does here. You can use the speed to run incredible flanks and I guarantee they never see it coming when you pop up. All alone on the back line with no one to help. Even if your name goes unsung and your team never knows what you did for them, remember it is a massive team play to take out Wildcats. Anyway, I don't overdo it, so just two more from me. One on exposure, this map is made for tour flanking. You can get right behind them, it's fun. And since we did come all this way, it would be rude not to have a quick look at their spawn so you can catch them. Perfect! 
And the last one for me, if you ever needed proof about how precise a railgun shot is, just take a look at the angles to get this wildcat on the rig. It was great. I really don't see a tank hitting either of those shots right there. Okay, so this brings us to siege mode now. So let's talk about it, particularly in the context of aggressive highly mobile gameplay. Now what you can do, which is quite legit, is drive out of your spawn. And if you see there are lots of flies buzzing around in the sky, why not? Go into siege mode and see if you can swat them down. So as you can see, it's exactly half of the usual charge time when I'm using a more round. Charlie. Oh, yeah! So okay, great, we can do that, but my advice to you would be don't hang around for very long because you can't move quickly and changing mode takes time and if Mr. C5 comes along, you're going to get toasted by them. The other thing that'll take you out quickly is another you. APS won't block railgun shots and if another railgun sees you, you're toast. You will not be able to move in time. Honestly, I don't think the siege mode is really all that necessary and where possible, we should be learning to live without it. This one was just fun because I was putting my mobility to maximum use. I was actually quite dogged in not letting this helicopter get away. I don't know why. I didn't do anything wrong. It didn't bother me. I just really, really wanted to get it. I love this. And get it, I did. Anyway, I really hope I've made my point with this section. 1.3 seconds to charge a more round which nearly instantaneously goes across the map wall to wall and has no discernible projectile drop, really isn't a very big ask to hit anything that's flying around in the air. Personally, I wouldn't trade your mobility for the sake of a half a second faster shot. It just really, really isn't necessary as I hope I've shown. Awesome. My support drop is ready to go. Okay, so this section is dedicated to anybody who still might be thinking that the tour is squishy, it's no good at capturing objectives. I respectfully ask you to take a look because that's simply not true. They are brilliant. <laughs> Cheeky Lee's player being denied by APS right there. Don't be shy about getting out of there if you've taken damage. There's no requirement to be a martyr for the sake of it. Right, I quite like this clip because I was just chilling at the back. I didn't want to go any deeper than was absolutely necessary to capture the objective because, you know, AT mines and people hiding with M5s in the bushes. But as I was just chilling here with my C5 friend, I noticed a vehicle parachuting in. Decided not to wait for it to come to me. Let's go look. Helicopter and jet pilots owe me many beers for all these wildcats. And even when you're capping at the back and it feels like you're far away from the battle, the great thing is just look to the sky. There's always a target up there that you can take a quick pop at. Awesome! 
So anyway, just don't let it be said that they're no good at capturing, it's not the case. Okay, so I said at the very outset that I wanted to take a little bit of time talking about spawn camping, backline sniping, so I shall. Look, I'm not blaming people. Look at this, I dropped in, I wanted to drive out, I wanted to go for it, but if I see a target right in front of me, I'm not gonna let this one pass for free. Look, I don't want to be a hypocrite, I always have and I always will go after spawn campers. But having actually played with the tour, I get it. I'm not saying that I like it, I'm just saying that I get it. When they're right in front of you, just like this. You're beautiful! I don't know anyone who would pass on a free shot like that. And here's the problem, I'm playing very honestly here. As I settled in, there was always a target in the sky for me to be going for. I keep stealing this jet's food. I'm about to do it again, sorry. Perfect! I can imagine he must be getting quite annoyed with me by this point. Anyway, so whilst I make my final serious point on this, let me show some spawn camping in action uh, while I talk so we're all on the same page about what I'm going on about. Personally, I find this sort of behavior in the game to be a little bit frustrating. There, I've said it. Please don't hate me. It's just an opinion. It's just where I'm at. But do I think that it's such a big problem that the tour should be deleted from the game or otherwise nerfed to the point that it becomes useless? No, because as I hope I've evidenced in this video, the tour can be tremendous fun, particularly when you're being aggressive and really getting out there into the battlefield. I hope the devs and the community can work together to find a solution we're all happy with so we don't end up doing something too heavy handed. So there it is, I've made my case, please tour responsibly. I really advocate the use of the tour as an aggressive hunter to be getting out into the battlefield, wiping out vehicles and popping aircraft along the way. I really do reject arguments that say that the tour is too squishy, it's not up to the job of capturing objectives, hopefully I've proven to you that's just simply not the case at all. In fact, it's actually a bloody monster when it gets out there and starts pounding on the other team. As ever, if you made it to the end of this video, you have my sincere thanks, and I do truly hope you're having an excellent summer or winter, depending on your hemisphere, wherever you are in the world. Happy railgunning to you all, however you should so choose to do it, and I will catch you at the next video. Have a great time, guys. See you next week. Bye-bye. Don't think I don't see you running. Allies engaging on Foxtrot 1. Beautiful!